Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much for organizing this wonderful conference in this wonderful place. Uh, this is a real, real, real treat for us, especially if you live in Middlebury, Vermont, where <laughs> our neighbors are shoveling snow momentarily. Um, yes, let's start the PowerPoint. Before we really dig into it, I just also wanted to um, 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 just give you a lay of the land. I'm, I will do the first half of the presentation. Ifa Desain is doing the second half of the presentation. Ifa Desain is the creator of this project. I've had some supporting roles on the sites, but uh, um, just to give credit where credit is due. Um, when the digital humanities emerged as a new research paradigm in the mid-2000s, pedagogical considerations were largely absent from discussions regarding, regarding the contributions of the digital humanities. Instead of pedagogy, early digital humanists focused exclusively on the epistemological values of technologies and methodologies associated to the digital humanities. Reflections on competencies that undergraduate students could and should develop in the context of digital humanity projects were at least, at best, an afterthought. However, in recent years, a lot of things changed. Uh, mostly scholars from the fields of applied linguistics, instructional technology, and rhetoric looked at the digital humanities uh, pedagogy divide and found new ways in order to look at the digital humanities as a really, really powerful tool that we have as in our classroom. So this is a presentation or project that joins these es efforts but it, it also provides a new dimension, and that is uh, a dimension that has not received a lot of scholarly attention before, and that is the integration of digital humanities into study abroad program. We're focusing on a project on digital map making among American study abroad students enrolled in a summer program in France, uh, and this presentation explores the integration of the digital humanities with intercultural learning through a map making um, digital map making project. So I will give you a quick overview. Oops. Uh, this one? Okay. This is the guy who talks about digital humanities and doesn't even know how to uh, <laughs> forward the slides, but uh, here we go. Um, so I will first talk a little bit of, about the uh, background and in particular focus on maps and the roles of maps in digital uh, humanities research. Um, and then also provide some of the uh, theoretical context for this project. Um, then we will focus on the contribution of digital map making tasks within the cultural excursion program of a study abroad learning environment. Um, we will continue by discussing how tasks associated to the creation of a collaborative digital map provided students with some opportunities to correlate written reflections about their cultural experiences with physical space. Um, let's talk a little bit about maps. Uh, forward here, okay. Maps have been around for millennia, and they really <laughs> represent one of the oldest textual genre if we think about them. Essentially, maps can be regarded as nonlinear multimodal texts that merge graphical information with language and iconography into complex social semiotic systems. These complex texts use multiple visual and linguistic channels to communicate information that relates to topographical features and natural spaces and human activities. Maps not only document names that members of a speech community attribute to places or geographical fe geological features, they also show borders as manifestations of political power relationships. As such, maps are, often, uh, maps are often texts that document simultaneously cultural contact and cultural conflict. The prim prim primary object objective of a map is to provide a factual representation of a physical, social, and political space, either to guide a traveler or to inform those who stayed at home. But cartographers throughout the ages have not only been recorders of realities, they also have used their maps for storytelling and to imagine the unknown. This later narrative feature is, you can see that sometimes in old maps when you have an ocean and you have suddenly a picture of a sea monster there. Yeah? 
that's probably not a reality. That's, uh, that's, that's, that, that's an icon that uh, signals to the, to, the, to the reader of the map, oh, these oceans are dangerous. Humanists have used maps as tools to, visual, uh, to visualize data long before the digital revolution. For example, di dialectologists have published their research findings in the form of atlases since the 19th century. Therefore, it doesn't come as a surprise that the analysis and presentation of data in the form of digital maps has become an important method for digital humanists. In fact, maps were, were at the center of one of the foundational monographs of the field by Franco Moretti in 2005. I think we have that here down below. Um, however, the big difference between digital and analog maps is that digital maps allow a much higher degree of dynamic content. Um, one can integrate multiple layers, markers, and embed maps with multimedia content. Uh, digital map making projects have provided humanity scholars with opportunities to graphically represent and correlate information with physical space in a much richer and more complex multimodal environment compared to conventional analog maps. Uh, in most simple terms, digital human humanists create layers of information that then they di digitally project onto a base map. This information layer can consist of graphical features and annotated markers. The markers can include pop-up windows to communicate additional information, etc., etc. Uh, the maps produced by digital humanities, humanists are therefore dynamic multimodal texts that visualize these processes of cultural conflict, fiction, transformations over time and space. Um, digital maps can be fairly simple to use, like your car's GPS, yeah? but they can also be really highly complex, uh, sophisticated, uh, uh, deep texts. Uh, a good example here would be Todd Presner's UCLA Hypercities project. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you see that on the internet, and um, uh, it, 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 it's really hard to navigate the, the information there. But once you, once you spend a couple of hours with that and kind of get it, then the then 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 the then the then the kind of the amount of data and information is 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 amazing, but let's turn from the digital humanist now to the student. So if digital humanists can do that and do that and it's useful, why not students and specifically why not students in uh, study abroad contexts? A um, couple of assumptions before really diving into this. Um, um, why, why, why should we do that? Is it just like a, a, just, just a gimmick, or is there a real uh, purpose to it? We obviously believe there's a real purpose to it, otherwise we wouldn't stand here with this project. Um, but let me share some uh, initial assumptions. As outlined above, maps can simultaneously represent imagination and reality. As such, they provide study abroad participants with opportunities to juxtapose their prior assumption about a place with their actual experiences um, as they interact with a, uh, with a space, with a location, uh, as part of study abroad participants. The digital mapping project can provide a platform for study abroad participants to develop, to articulate, and to share intercultural insights collaboratively. The digital maps becomes a tool to connect the written reflections and on cultural experiences with physical space of the study abroad environment. The integrated process of reflective writing and cartographic practice can help learners not only to explore their physical development, uh, physical environment, but also to develop an understanding of the spatial relations of their actual experiences in the host country. And thirdly, the creation of annotations that students generate based on clearly formulated written writing assignments um, provides students with opportunities to compare the official narratives of a cultural space with local assumptions and their actual experiences of these spaces. And ultimately, we hypoth hypothesize is that this process results uh, in a more nuanced sense of space. So. I will kind of do a couple of shortcuts as I go over some of the more uh, kind of kind of pr prior research. The kind of not a big surprise. There is not a lot of research on digital mapping and study abroad contexts. Yeah, um, but of course, uh, 
this project has been theoretically informed uh, by a couple of uh, uh, by a couple of scholars. Um, Bonnie Norton is perhaps the most important uh, theoretical donor to our work, um, and that's in particular her work on identity construction among language learners. And we have a slide in the very end that has the full the full references. Um, another more recent study is by uh, Julia Stewart, which is on the development of critical language awareness and social identity in study. Uh, among study abroad programs through e-journaling. So there you have already the connection between writing um, and reflective writing and identity formation and the, uh, the, uh, um, 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 the, the development of something that we then in the context of this uh, uh, cartographic project uh, call the sense of place. And sense of place is really a concept that has that, uh, that, that, that has been developed in the fields of geography, uh, anthropology, urban planning, uh, etc. And that is really this understanding that place is uh, not just a spatial phenomenon, but fundamentally a social phenomenon. Um, and this uh, had, been, had been very, very important for Zobel then, uh, for the development of the concept of place-based pedagogies. So I'm sorry that I'm just like rushing through some of these uh, uh, some of these remarks, but I think we want to now also get like a more concrete understanding of the project, and therefore I'm handing the microphone over uh, to to Eva Desain. Thank you, Peter. So let's turn to the actual project. Um, in the summer of 2016. Nine undergraduate um, students collaboratively created a digital map of their study abroad experience in France. All were enrolled in an eight-week summer program for beginning and intermediate level learners of French offered by Vanderbilt University. In the following, I will describe the context of the program and the learning environment associated to the project. For more than 50 years, Vanderbilt University maintained a year-long presence in Aix-en-Provence. During the summer program, all students lived in shared apartments with at least one other American and one French-speaking peer, usually an undergraduate from one of the six local universities. In order to replicate some of the features of a traditional homestay, each participant was matched with a local family. These families hosted the program participants for dinner on three evenings per week. And those dinners provided participants with opportunities to expand their social networks and to exclusively converse in a target language in a social setting. During the summer program, both American and local faculty led, no, local faculty led participants on six one-day excursions in the region and one one-week-long excursion to Paris. To contextualize this um, excursion program, all students were automatically enrolled in the one credit course cultural study tour. In the context of this course, students researched in small groups the destination for an upcoming excursion and shared their findings in the form of presentations with their peers. The class was conducted entirely in English because the expression of nuanced cultural observations and self-perceptions required language proficiency that those students who joined the study abroad program as absolute beginners did not have. Work conducted in the context of this seminar, conversations with local informants, such as a member of their local host family and the Francophone roommate, and the actual experiences during the excursions provided the foundations for the annotations on the map. Specifically, students completed the following three tasks each week that led to the creation of three annotated markers on the digital map. One, a short reflective vignette that described their expectations prior to the visit based on the factual information of the space. In other words, what's the official narrative of the place? A second vignette that reflects the associations of the place among a local informant. In other words, what do your French friends think about the place? And a third vignette that gives account of their actual experiences after having visited the place. In other words, in which ways did your actual experiences conflict with the official narrative and the perceptions of your local informants? Or more plainly, what surprised you? 
Following the visit, the students made short presentations, not only sharing their reflections, but also included photographs that illustrated each of these vignettes. Finally, they uploaded the vignettes and images to the digital map. <coughs> the platform of the project is the free digital mapping and storytelling tool, Story Maps JS, developed at Northwestern University's Night Lab. The result of the students' efforts over the summer is a digital map with a total of 63 annotations that each consist of a short vignette and an image. These 63 annotations are organized in 21 trios representing each the official narrative, the local narrative, and the surprise element. To further illustrate the task, I will analyze the three vignettes and images one of the participants created in order to document the official narrative, the local perspective, and the surprise element associated with the excursion to Paris. Rather predictably, the student chose a picture of the Eiffel Tower to represent the official narrative of the French capital. This image is accompanied by a short text that describes the central location of Paris in the hexagon, its status as a political, cultural, and commercial center, the city's historic roots in a Celtic settlement, and information about the Eiffel Tower. With the exception of the students' observations that relate to the Euro 2016 soccer tournament, an event that shaped France's public discourse, and even the appearance of one of the most recognizable buildings in the world, the vignette the student composed reflects factual information that could be found in any tourist guidebook aimed at overseas visitors to the French capital. The second annotation is the result of two local narratives, that of the host mother and that of a Francophone university student living in Paris. The narratives of the local informants largely confirm the official narrative. Paris is a cultural and intellectual center with world-class museums and universities. However, the local narrative encouraged the student to walk off the beaten track and explore a venue that typically remains hidden to the tourist, the Bibliothèque Publique d'Information inside the Centre Pompidou. In her vignette, the student compares the lively, studious atmosphere in the library with an equiv equivalent locale in her native environment, the main library at Vanderbilt. The third marker on the digital map elaborates on a feature of Paris that the learner has encountered that is not reflected in the official and local narrative. Here, the student expresses her surprise about the omnipresence of street art in Montmartre. Her vignette explores the work of contemporary artist Grigos, whose sculpture, My Face on the Walls of Paris, appears in oh, close to a thousand variations on walls all over the city and beyond. The student's choice to focus on street art demonstrates that she developed a perception of Paris not merely as a dead museum that showcases the works of past masters, but as an organic hotbed of contemporary artistic innovation that aware observers can experience on virtually every street corner of Paris. There's a place for the digital humanities and study abroad programs. The project exemplifies the use of digital map making technologies to enhance the depth of cultural experiences in the context of an excursion program. The GIS technology created a fundamentally participant-centered, place-based pedagogy and helps to move away from the traditionally teacher-centered delivery of cultural information. By giving individual accounts of their local exploratory experiences, the learning environment allowed students to express insights that relate to their distinctive field experiences. The assignments encouraged learners to refine their social network in the target community, and this aided individuals to develop unique pers perspectives of the place they inhabit as study abroad students. Digital mapping projects can foster a community of culturally aware students abroad by encouraging them to participate in a long-term initiative that help them develop a greater critical awareness of themselves, the points of view of locals, and the space they inhabit as learners abroad. I would like to draw your attention to one important aspect of the project. Although the language learning objectives are at the center of the Vanderbilt in France program, students used English throughout all stages of the project. 
We made this choice and sacrifice because the nine students were very heterogeneous in terms of their target language proficiency. Whereas two students joined the program without any prior knowledge of French, the most proficient students performed at the intermediate high level in the beginning of the summer program. With a more homogeneous group, it's not only possible, but also desirable to stage the digital mapping project entirely in the target language. I would like to conclude on the project with three recommendations for instructors and administrators of study abroad programs. <coughs> One, develop a nuanced perception of the affordances of technology in study abroad programs. Digital innovations are sometimes regarded as potential challenges to the cultural and linguistic immersion environment that many study abroad practitioners attempt to foster in their programs. I've seen in several programs the negative impact in particular of smartphones on group dynamics and willingness to engage with the physical environment. However, this presentation argues that if deployed effectively, the negative impact of digital technologies can be reversed the smartphone becomes a tool to document nuanced perceptions and reflections while in the field, which are then later assembled collaboratively and shared as a tapestry of cognitive and affective responses to personal impressions and intercultural experiences. Two, curricularize out-of-classroom intercultural experiences. This is, in my view, the essence of place-based pedagogies. It is not enough that students are experiencing their surroundings in the field. Instead, they need to develop a critical awareness of their location by becoming aware that their experiences as study abroad participants are strongly mediated by their expectation. These expectations are co-constructed by both the official narrative and the information of local interlocutors. The project documented in this presentation represents one of many ways to anchor this crucial learning objective in the study abroad curriculum. Lastly, create opportunities for learners to share and curate meaningful intercultural reflections. Despite so-called social media platforms, digital environments tend to foster isolation. Experiences, impressions, and reflections can be shared by millions or with millions, but they often lack depth. They also rarely stimulate meaningful and nuanced exchanges of ideas. The role of educators, not only in study abroad programs, is to counter this reality and create robust digital public spheres that allow learners to create and curate meaningful content and to share deep reflections. I do not claim that this project helps individual participants and study abroad groups to achieve this goal consistently. However, I do believe that it represents a small step into the right direction that will hopefully inspire others to conceive and implement learning opportunities with similar objectives for their students. Thank you. who was first. I think you were first. So could you describe the value added by the mapping element in this project and how it's more effective than, say, just you doing the same exercise through journaling? Mm -hmm. Do you want to mm -hmm. take it? Yes. Um, first of all, the added value in general, I think, about like to curricularize uh, the experience, like uh, the an excursion program is really that, um, again, I was very much on the sidelines of that um, but uh, the way I, the, my, my understanding from how it, how this excursion program was didacticized with this one credit hour bearing class was basically there was, it was basically the grand tour for American students in class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, oh yeah, this week we go to uh, to to Paris, and next week we go to Avignon, and and then we go to, we to Paris. But it was all basically uh, uh, um, 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 kind of the official narrative, um, and I think that what the what the what the what, what the task associated to um, kind of juxtaposing this official narrative with what do actually people on the street think about about this place, and what do I actually experience myself, um, helped tremendously in order to um, to to. Develop a reflective personal uh, 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 awareness of the place. The, it's, 
kind of this thing that if you, if you talk to, or if you think about a study abroad participant, all of us, before we go to a place where we have never been before, and some people in this room maybe have never been to Tucson before, or to this conference, but we all visualize how it will be as we plan it, yeah? Um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, if, if a young college student is supposed to go to France, they kind of have ideas in their head. We can do, uh, we do <coughs> orientations and orientations and orientations, but you still imagine it will be that way. It will be, it, it will be a certain way. And then you arrive there, and it's completely different. Yeah? I'm trying to pull up the map to just kind of show and what the effect would be, but I, yeah. I, I just can't and figure it out. And I think that kind of friction is often, is, is, is often at the heart of the transformational impact of the study of foreign experience, but also the disappointment or the frustration that people associate to study abroad. Uh, so. And if you look at the map and literally walking yourself through that space, I think that it is both collaborative in its nature and then you also physically walk your way through to each other's experiences while they're abroad. And I think that the affect of students who are working on this project is very differently mediated with a program project like this than with an e-journaling program or basis for um, where they really engage mostly with themselves then. And so this collaborative nature and then the memento that is created of their experience where they can not only walk themselves through this map but also their family and kind of talk about what they saw is added value to the project, I think. Mm -hmm. I thought it was important that you, yeah, the internet connection is not, yeah. Yeah, you can, yeah. You can play in different ways with um, the layers. Mm -hmm.